There's been so much hype around the CapCut video editor, so let's see what this is about. First, I want to say that CapCut caught me by surprise, and I believe it can become a triple face threat, and here's why. Now, CapCut is a free video editing software that first started out as a mobile editing app, currently available on iPhone and Android, which quickly grew into popularity because of the new wave of short form content, i.e. tech talk. You no longer needed a dedicated computer and editing software to edit these videos. Now you can make them from the comfort of your own phone, which is a genius play. Soon after that, they launched an entirely web-based editor, meaning you would have access to CapCut similar to a traditional video editing software, but without the processing power of your computer since it was all web and cloud-based, giving another access point to CapCut without having a powerful system. But now recently, they developed a fully-fledged editing software that you can download from their own website, currently available on Mac and Windows, and it basically competes with the traditional editors of today, such as Premiere, DaVinci, and many others, while still remaining free to use. And the big point I want to emphasize is that CapCut is currently one of the big names you hear when you think about mobile editing apps, especially for TikTok. But they also made a name for themselves in regards to the web-based service that they provide. And now that they have officially entered the more traditional route of being able to download the software, they have certainly covered all the major markets, and now they just simply need to work on improving and optimizing their editing experience. The only the reason I bring up this point is obviously because their integration within TikTok. CapCut is owned by the same parent company, ByteDance, which makes sense why CapCut and TikTok work perfectly together. You may have actually seen some TikToks that say that have been edited on CapCut as well. In fact, if you go to their website, you can see what CapCut claims to be their specialty. Among them are marketing videos, e-commerce, and of course, TikTok videos. And if you actually open CapCut on your phone, desktop, or browser, it will give you the option of signing in with Google or your TikTok account. They also give you access to edit with TikTok templates, among other things, and even lets you download popular sounds used on the platform. But they are copyrighted, obviously. But that's not to say that you can't edit regular videos on it as well. It's honestly a really good option, especially if you don't have much experience with editing in general. Besides that, I just wanted to get this point across so you can see what type of editor CapCut is. Let's talk about the design. Well, more specifically, the multiple designs that CapCut has, starting with the mobile app. Now, if you used mobile editing apps in the past, it's honestly not that different in the trimming and cutting aspect of the video. However, it does differ a lot when considering all the effects and features you have access to, which can be found on the bottom row, followed above by the entire editing timeline, which is organized by layers. And then above that is the main preview screen, which you can enlarge to view the video. But that's the main interface that you'll be interacting with aside from the home screen where you can sign in, upload, or import your clips and start a new project or use a template. Now, it can be a little overwhelming at first, but you'll get used to it after editing your first video or two. Not to mention, but there will always be guides to instruct you how to use a certain feature and tool set, so you'll be all right. Nothing much to say for the mobile UI. On CapCut, it's pretty standard, but I do like it. Moving on to CapCut's web-based editor, which is pretty good as well. Honestly, it follows the same design as most web editors, such as Canva and a few others. Anyways, to get back to the editor itself, all you have to do is go to the website and select on open CapCut on your browser. From there, you'll be presented with the main interface, which consists of the media playlist, preview screen, the settings panel for your effects, and timeline down below. To get access to the footage, you do have to upload all your clips, which will then process, or if you have them stored in the cloud, you can simply sign in onto your account, which you'll need to do once you're ready to export your video. Other than that, you can find the rest of the pages on a toolbar, which will be on the left side, and you can switch to and from the media page, stock videos, audio, text, transitions, and and much more. It's a pretty simple interface and I like the overall aesthetic. But now that you can download CapCut onto your desktop, it does come with some features of its own. The downloading process is pretty simple. Just go to their website and they will automatically provide you the download option for your own system. Once you open CapCut, you'll be prompted by the main home screen that will allow you to sign in, see your projects, or create a new one. Inside the interface is pretty neat and sectioned off by four main panels, which consists of the player, project details, timeline, and most importantly, 
importantly, the media playlist, which also has different tabs that gives you access to the audio, text, transitions, and effects settings. Another neat detail is that on the top ribbon, there's a button that you can use to switch from the default layout into other layout options, prioritizing different panels. You can also go to each individual panel and move them around the interface, and it will also give you some button options on the top of each panel for you to choose what you want to do with it. Going back to the top ribbon, we have more tools, one of which is the keyboard shortcut tool. It's basically a list of different shortcuts that you can use while editing, and I highly encourage that you guys go through this because there's a lot of different shortcuts that might be helpful. Finally, we have the export button, which gives you a brief set of settings for a normal video or audio export. It's pretty simple. And that's it for all the interfaces. One thing that you'll see in common across these three iterations of CapCut are the features. Now that does come with some restrictions based on their capabilities, but for the most part, they all share the same base features, such as logging in with your TikTok account and being able to use templates to start editing your clips with all the in-house editing tools that it offers for music, text overlays, and much more. Basically covering all you could think of when editing on your phone, browser, or desktop. Another neat thing that they added is the ability to remove their watermark at the end of each video. You can simply delete it or just select on removing that feature in the settings when using the mobile app. Now on the browser or desktop version, all you have to do is sign up and create an account just to remove the watermark, just in case if you guys were worried about that. The rest of the features as you might expect are just the general editing features that CapCut has, which is pretty impressive. I do gotta say that the team behind CapCut is pushing new features every now and again, which is pretty amazing to see, especially when using your mobile devices or just the whole ecosystem in general. In fact, if you head onto their website right now, they will give you a list of all the potential use cases that you might find yourself using CapCut for with all the list of features that it has, such as text to speech, which a lot of people use it in some of their forms formats, along with some neat transitions, text effects, and the ability to auto cut on the mobile version. And one thing I really wanted to point out with CapCut is its crazy ability to introduce pretty advanced features, but implementing it in a really easy way to use it. And I'm talking about keyframe animations, slow motion, chroma keying, masking, and all these pretty advanced effects that we'd use on more traditional editors like DaVinci or Premiere, but they do it on a way that's really easy to use, uh, at least for beginners or just people who want to to edit something really quick and don't want to get into the deep end of making these complicated edits. They're doing a really good job at simplifying these tools for the general public, I guess. When it comes to the editing itself, it's pretty simple. It's pretty familiar. You know, you can layer tracks, audio, video. It doesn't really matter. You can all layer it up on the timeline. It's a really nice and neat composition when talking about sequencing with the CapCuts timeline. It's probably not going to handle the most high-end editing, but we'll get a lot of the jobs done. One exception on this is on the mobile editing app. It's a little bit tricky on handling layers on the editing timeline since it is a mobile phone and there's not too much room to play around with, but I did notice that it will automatically make different layer tracks for audio and sometimes video. It really just depends on how you lay things out when you're editing on the mobile app. I know sometimes if you don't have an account with CapCut on the web-based version, it will limit the video file size that you can actually import onto the editor. So be careful with that. But other than that, the editing experience is nice, neat, fast, and most importantly, functional. With all of this said, I do have to say that there's some in-app purchases, such as the cloud storage and some subscriptions for pro features. But other than that, it's completely free to use. CapCut's performance when talking about all three iterations of these platforms depends on a number of factors, such as internet speeds and processing power. Because whenever you're using CapCut, you will always have to upload your footage onto the cloud, especially when editing on the web-based app and sometimes on the mobile app as well. Unless if you have the footage right in your device, then you can just simply import it like you would on the desktop software version. Aside from that, there also have been some comments made in regards to the exporting speeds of CapCut, which are not the fastest and it's something to consider, especially if you're planning to export longer format videos. But besides that, CapCut's performance during the editing process is as smooth as it can be, even when adding effects, audio, and filters. And that is thanks to the constant optimization that CapCut is revising on the back end. They're always updating and improving their software experience for the thousands of users they have on these platforms, since they are integrated with TikTok, and they also provide many ways for users to report their experience to the team through surveys, feedback options, and multiple 
multiple access to their communities. Hopefully newer iterations of the service brings a more refined editor for all to use. So who is this for? Well, the common theme through this video is certainly aimed on short form content, either for YouTube Shorts, Reels, and obviously Tech Talk. CapCut is just one of those products that's hyper focused on these types of formats, but it's not to say that other editors like you and me that work on longer form content can't edit on CapCut. I just think that the simplicity and the suite of tools that CapCut offers is more geared towards these types of creators that make short form content and beginners who are starting editing in general. And I think CapCut knows this, which is why these groups of people will most likely be their general audience. So do I think that CapCut is a threat to the more traditional, well-established editing softwares out there? Well, yes and no. I mean, if you're really into TikTok and making short form content, then yes, CapCut has an amazing suite of tools to get those videos done, especially if you're planning on taking clients that make TikToks or more commonly TikTok ads, then your workload will move much more quickly. But for the traditional editing for longer form content that requires more cutting, sequencing, and compositing, I would stick to the traditional programs. But I will say this in regards to this traditional editing. CapCut is farther along than the rest of these apps or web-based editors. As I said, if they continue to improve, they will undoubtedly be a triple phase threat to the rest of the competition, which we love to see. So check it out if you're interested and leave any suggestions for the next episode. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.